Our next speaker is Dr. Sahand Vahafdori. Sorry, he received his Bachelor of Science from the University of British Columbia in 2009. He attended St. George's University School of Medicine in Granada, West Indies from 2011 to 2015, and he received his Doctor of Medicine degree in May 2015, and has been working as a clinical research assistant at Vancouver Infectious Disease Centre ever since. Dr. Verhadori's research has been presented at multiple national and international conferences. Please, let's welcome Dr. Fedori. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. And um, before we start, I would like to apologize if I have to cough a few times. I've been sick for the past couple of days, so I hope you uh, forgive me for that. And um, so the topic of our talk today is the cascade of care of HIV-positive men who have sex with men in the Vancouver downtown east side. At VADC, we run a multidisciplinary clinic, infectious disease clinic for that matter, where um, we focus on providing care for marginalized and vulnerable population in Vancouver. Our main focus has been on the Vancouver East Side, where a lot of IV drug user, users reside and homeless people reside, as well as um, a lot of um, men who have sex with men. And uh, so this research here, this uh, topic that we are going to cover today looks at uh, that specific patient population and uh, the stigma that is associated with providing care for this population and for them to be able to ask for her help. So the overview, we are looking at who lives in downtown east side and how do we reach them. And VADC, we are also going to talk about the VADC community pop-up clinics, and uh, we talk about a little bit of the results that we found out, a little summary of the presentation and the conclusion talking about the stigma. So as a background, downtown east side Vancouver has a population of about 18,000 people, 12,000 of whom are current or active drug uh, or recent drug, drug users. And uh, this population, this area, this neighborhood is very well known for its high prevalence of HIV and Hep C, and uh, as well as a number of other social challenges, including high rates of poverty, prostitution, homelessness, and crime. There has been a lot of efforts uh, provided to um, available to be able to engage this demographic in care. However, um, many people who live with HIV um, within this neighborhood specifically are still unengaged and um, are underdiagnosed with HIV and specifically he he hepatitis C. And so therefore there's a need to develop uh, an, an innovative structure to address this issue and understand the level of HIV infection, infection knowledge and interest to seek care. So, and this is what exactly the VADC has tried to accomplish. We have developed a model of community portable clinics, from now on we call them CPCs, um, and this model basically focuses on seeking and outreaching the populations at risk instead of waiting for the populations to come to us. So what we do every Friday, we, uh, a group of uh, professionals from VIDC, we go to downtown east side at multiple different sites, including Insight, which is the only supervised injection um, facility in North America, and we provide them with the point of care HIV and Hep C testing. I will talk a bit more about what this point of care testing is, but by providing an incentive to this population of $10, which is in the form of two $5 gift cards, we basically try to reach out to this population to try to engage them in care, try to identify who has been, uh, who has been diagnosed with HIV or Hep C and who has not 
And if they have not been diagnosed, or if they have been, or they're not under our, any, anybody's care, we try to engage them in care. We try to bring them in, and we try to um, help them out with the proper medication they need. And um, at the same time that these participants are being tested for HIV and Hep C, we also provide them with a questionnaire. This questionnaire has about 22 questions, and it's mostly about the demographics, age, sex, uh, previous IV drug users, whether or not they've had sex with men, women, or both in the past, and uh, questions of that sort. And by doing that, we've been able to identify some very interesting trends among this um, population in this neighborhood. So these are some of the sites that we go to. Uh, we go to First United Church, uh, the Salvation Army, the Carnegie Hall Union Gospel Mission, the Dugout Insight, and uh, Evelyn Seller Center. So, and these are just some of the, some of the sites that we go to. And uh, we've been actively involved with these organizations, and I would like to thank every single one of these organizations for providing us with a venue to reach out to, these, uh, to this patient population. And um, when we go there, as I mentioned before, we provide them with the point of care testing. This is exactly what it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's an oral swap. There's no blood involved, which is the beautiful part of it. So a lot of patients are more open to getting tested. This is an oral swap for both HIV and Hep C. And uh, it takes about 10, 15 minutes for the results to come up. And the antibody is, if, if the antibody is positive, if, if the test results is positive, all it means is that we're going to have to ask these patients to come to the clinic, get proper blood work done to get properly diagnosed with either infection and uh, to assess their advancement of their, uh, their disease. And if it's negative, then it's hallelujah. Everybody knows it's, uh, we're negative and then we're good to go. So we've, since 2013, we have tested over 1,700 people in this neighborhood. And this is just um, a quick snapshot of uh, the number of patients we've tested. Uh, each month uh, since 2013, and the number of positive cases of HIV and Hep C. I don't know if it's very visible, but um, for example, in August 2015, this, this data is um, up to date as of August 2015. I haven't updated the last couple of months. But we've had, uh, we tested 54 people, 21 of whom were Hep C positive, and um, three were HIV positives. So, and this is the questionnaire that we provide them. They're not forced, obviously, they're not obligated to fill out the questionnaire. It's completely voluntary. Uh, if they do, however, they get that uh, $5 gift card. And uh, out of the 1,700 who we have tested, about 1,125 1, have chosen to fill out the questionnaire. And this questionnaire talks about uh, their age, um, ethnicity, gender, uh, marital status, and uh, other categories that we see. Um, some of the more interesting results that have come out of this questionnaire are, first of all, the average age of our d patients that we see are, uh, is 46.3, and um, about 28%, 28 28.5% of these people are, for, are from the... Uh, indigenous people of Canada, or First Nations, and 56.9%, uh, 57% are almost um, white or Caucasian. And uh, in terms of the gender, we have 70, almost 74% are male, and 73% uh, are single. And going further down, about 19% uh, are, live in resident or shelters, uh, shelters and 22% are, are homeless. And among uh, the people who filled out the questionnaire, about 62% are not working or unemployed, and 52% um, um, have been previously incarcerated. So we asked them how they feel in general about their health. And um, we asked them how they feel in general about their, their health, and 
surprisingly enough, a lot of them think their health is very good. And uh, so to be exact, about 80% about th don't think that there's anything wrong with them or their health is in a very good uh, state. And so when we ask them about how, um, their history of being tested for HIV, about 17%, 17.69% said they have never been tested for HIV. And keep in mind that these people, a majority are IV drug users and uh, MSM. And uh, health conditions, 28% um, said that uh, they've had uh, hep C in the past, and 3.64% said that they've been diagnosed with uh, HIV AIDS in the past. And we asked them if they have previously or currently been using uh, injecting drugs, specifically injecting drugs. 44% uh, yes, said yes. And we asked them whether or not they have um, had sex with men or both men and women in the past. And uh, about 25%, 26% said yes. And um, most interestingly, um, about 18% said they never use the protective measures when they're having sex. And uh, about 14% really did not have a sound knowledge of how HIV is being transmitted. And that is very, very extremely alarming. So just to move on, uh, we discussed this before. So 35.5% um, did not fill the questionnaire in our, uh, among our population. And uh, so among the people who did fill out and among the men who were 832 people, 70 of them identified themselves as being MSM. Among the MSM, 65.7%, uh, about almost 66%, uh, were also injecting drugs. 55.7% were white, 186 were among First Nations, and this, these are among the MSM people only. And 37% uh, were homeless, 14% of our MSM were, un, uh, were employed, so the majority were unemployed, and 85.7% uh, were single. So among our MSM, about 84% um, had previously been tested. So about almost 16% then never been tested for HIV in the past. That doesn't mean they have HIV, it just means that it hasn't, they've never been tested for HIV in the past. And 17.1% had incorrect information about the HIV transmission. And 30, almost 33% uh, said that they use protection during sexual intercourse. And the results were extremely alarming when we looked at this slide. So the proportion of HIV positive MSM among those who answered the questionnaire, which were 1,125. Um, so 38 people um, had tested positive for HIV among this, this population. Six, uh, six of them were MSM and were HIV positive. Uh, which is 15.8% of that population. And among the 38, two people said that they did not, they had never been tested or they, didn't, they were unaware of their HIV status. And when we tested them, they came out positive. And that turns out to be about 5.3% of patients who, um, who tested positive for HIV. So the two individuals who were not previously tested for HIV infection were found to be HIV positives. Uh, subject one was a 49-year-old gentleman. Uh, he is also a um, drug user, and he is on methadone treatment uh, under our care in, uh, at VADC. And the, uh, he is also hep C co-infect with um, uh, unemployment and homelessness. 
and uh, he was also previously incarcerated. Subject number two, 53 year old male. Again, uh, this patient chose not to follow up in our clinic and is lost to follow up. And, um, but we did identify this person during our uh, community portable clinics. In summary, MSM represent as much as 8% of the population at Vancouver downtown east side. That's a quite a big portion. This, prob uh, this probably represents a population that is particularly vulnerable and is stigmatized and may be particularly difficult to reach. And um, it is especially important because as we saw previously, it's about two out of three MSM do not use condoms during sexual activities. And despite extensive campaigns to test and treat HIV, uh, about one out of six do not appear to have been ever tested for HIV. So in conclusion, despite extensive efforts expand, um, expanded to identify all HIV infected indiv individuals on the downtown east side of Vancouver, some have not been identified, including number of MSMs. The stigma associated with the positive HIV status may have had something to do with it. Uh, just the fact that um, many MSM believe that just because they have HIV, they may not be taken care of as, as well as they should. They, uh, that might actually prevent uh, them seeking help when they need it. So therefore, innovative strategies, um, such as our community pop-up clinics, uh, are essential. Are essential to provide uh, a medium, provide a tool to be able to engage and reach out to this patient population in order to have them engaged uh, more than they are. And um, activities similar to ours can potentially uh, reach out to all the individuals HIV positive individuals in BC and the rest of the country for that matter and um, bring, them, uh, bring them under our care. It is also imperative to address the issue of a stigma that may be more significant on the downtown east side, especially with respect to MSM. And um, using a structure and, uh, and a sort of model that VIDC has created uh, it being a multidisciplinary clinic, infectious disease clinic, we take care of the both psychological, um, psych psychological social, medical, and addiction uh, parts in um, addiction issues in, in our patients. So we tend to try to address every possible um, issue that our patients might have in order to have them more engaged and have them more comfortable coming to uh, a clinic and being treated with the proper medication. And none of, the, none of our work would have been possible without the help of all these wonderful people. Um, and, um, I'm not going to read every single one of them, their names, but uh, I would like to thank every single one of them. And um, you're going to be open to questions later on. Thank you.